There we are. There okay. Hi, I'm Sasha. And I'm Dahi. This is DNA Slot Cars, and we're doing a podcast with Dave Kennedy from Slot Car News. Hey, Dave. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? We're great. Good. And thank you very much for coming on, Dave. We really thank appreciate you so much. it. Uh, I appreciate being asked, and uh, I love your channel. You guys do a great okay. job, and uh, it's a unique thing that you're doing in the slot car uh, world on uh, YouTube, and uh, you're doing a, a heck of a job at it. So thank you very much. Thank and you. So am I yeah. right, and was I right to give in to the pressure from Sasha and her mom to do it? <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, it's all good fun, you know? It's uh, sure. it's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't do it if you don't have fun. Exactly. 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 Well, this little yep. lady has all sorts of questions down here for you, Dave. Um, Very cool. So we'll let her get started whenever she's ready. Where right. do you live? I live in uh, pretty much the middle of Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania is kind of a rectangle. And I live basically in the middle of it, in the northern middle of the state. I was born in New York City, okay, uh, on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, mm -hmm. and I've moved more than thirty times in my life. But uh, I've lived in Pennsylvania most of my life, and I live in Pennsylvania now. I thought I'd moved a lot of times. Actually, I've moved a lot of times as well. Actually, yeah, it's it's not. The fun things are definitely packing up your stuff and moving is not one of them. <laughs> no. Destinations not. sometimes are fun, aren't they? Yeah. It was fun yeah. when we came when we came over here, but it was the arrival and getting sorted that was the fun bit. It wasn't moving halfway around the world, was it? Where do, where do you all live and where are you all originally from? So we're in Casey, Texas now. Oh, okay. And um we moved from Perth, Australia, so we're from Western Australia. Oh boy! And I, um, obviously, with this accent, you know, I'm not from there. I'm from um, Southern Ireland, a place called mm -hmm. County Wexford. And this little lady was born out in Australia, so I was I was in Australia for nearly ten years. And okay. yeah, just uh, the work end of things took me and our mom <laughs> over here, and um, yeah, so we're. We're getting to grips with uh, life in the U.S. Yes. And, yeah. In, enjoying enjoying life at the moment. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I my dad lives in uh, the hill country in Texas. Lives ah, in nice. Llano, uh, yeah, about cool. an hour southwest of Austin. It's a nice part of the world, actually, um, up there, isn't it? I've we've yeah. gone up to Austin. We didn't get enough time in Austin, but anywhere around Austin, you know, San Antonio. I think that's definitely on our list to explore more of, yeah. for sure. Yeah, the hill country is beautiful. Yeah. It's, I prefer it to um, kind of north Texas and mm. certainly kind of southeast Texas around Houston and yeah. stuff like that. But anyway. Yeah. And uh, actually, you were saying about Pennsylvania. I love the Pennsylvania railroads, The um, <laughs> all those, yeah. those uh, yeah, classic and post-war, even just deliveries on them. We like our railways as well yeah um and cool. the pennsylvania ones are are ones that always come up you know they always seem to have they just look a little bit cooler than some of the others you know yeah my family uh my uncle and my grandfather uh well, my grandfather's passed away years ago but my uncle was big into trains yeah, and cool. that was kind of a hobby for me as well when i was little because mm. my grandfather built a live steam engine oh, and nice. they had uh ho trains Mm. And my uncle has a model that's um, basically uh, kind of Brooklyn area. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's the that's the genre or the era the era he's chosen. Brooklyn, kind right. of uh, mid nineteen forties, like b during the war. Actually, yeah. the early forties. So probably I think it's forty three ish is what okay. he picked. So there's some Pennsylvania Railroad uh, rolling right. stock on that on his train layout. He has mm. a huge layout and yeah anyway yeah so trains and slot cars are kind of in my blood because he got me into slot cars when i was yeah. you know probably four or earlier so yeah. um yeah i mean it was something that i've done forever and trains also 
That's cool. It's the yeah. same with us, actually. My mom's side of the family were involved with Her Aaron Road Aaron back in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the railway was always in in the family on that mm -hmm. side. So it's just a, a natural. I mean, I like building, uh, you know, models and dioramas and stuff. And Sasha wants a proper railway layout. So I'm going to embark on that probably when it gets too hot outside here. <laughs> uh, which which will happen fairly shortly, if my memory oh, is, yeah. <laughs> is right, yeah. It gets pretty crazy down here heat-wise in, um, you know, sort of June, July, and August, that's for sure. Once it was like over 100 degrees. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it gets pretty awful here where I live in Pennsylvania, actually, too. Yeah. Um, we have the Little League World Series here, so people come in from all over the world and even people from Florida comment about how awful and humid it is here in central Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, so it, it might only be a hundred degrees, but it'll be 90% humidity and it'll be just, yeah. <laughs> you'd be just dripping wet. <laughs> it's like, you know, you walk out and you, you wear glasses, of course. And I always remember <laughs> yeah. being offshore, you know, in, in a, north of Australia and you walk out the door and next thing you <laughs> yeah. just, Fogged up, you know, with the safety glasses. Yeah, camera gear too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Camera gear, drones. Uh, man, I have some stories about waiting to do stuff offshore and having to literally just leave the gear, <laughs> you know, and sit around and wait for it to clear, you know. Yeah, yeah. My my, uh, We do some drone photography too. My wife is licensed and yeah. um, because we work for the newspaper, so we, you know, we have to be, uh, legal to fly yeah. for work. Um, yeah. uh, and so she, I don't have my license, but I'll fly once in a while, uh, mm. with, with, with her if it's for work. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we do some, some drone photography for the paper, just mainly kind of scenics and things like that. Yeah, uh, cool. uh, overhead kinds of, of the, you know, uh, sports fields or whatever, mm -hmm. just kind of set a scene anyway. Yeah, so nice. what, what, what else we got? Oh, I just, I'm, I'm looking over here now. I'm like, where did they all come from? <laughs> How did you first get into slot cars? And what was your first ever set cars? So I got into slot cars when I was very little. My uncle, who was like my dad, mm -hmm. um, started me um, with probably all kinds of cool toys in general. Mm. But slot cars specifically, he had um, Ravel track and he would put up a small oval layout uh, and I would go play with him on the weekends. We'd live with my grandmother and grandfather in Connecticut at the time and he lived nearby. Mm -hmm. And so I would go on the weekends or I don't know when it was, I was little and uh, go play slot cars with him. It was just kind of like a normal toy. Yeah. And um uh I kind of and then I would visit him during the summers when we moved away when we moved to Pennsylvania I would go back for two or three weeks in the summer and go stay with him in in Connecticut and New Haven and uh he would put the slot car track back up or some version of a track and we would play with it all summer and then I would go home and go back to school. <laughs> um and um my first modern slot car, I guess, was probably this Ninco uh, Mini Cooper, yeah, uh, which has donated most of its guts for other projects now. <laughs> it's a um, shell, shell of a yeah, exactly. Itself. But it's a it's a it's a great little model, and it's the Gen mm -hmm. One modern Mini Cooper, obviously. Yeah, and um, uh, I guess this was probably my first modern slot car mm -hmm. um my first set would have been an ho set from tyco and yeah. i don't have those anymore unfortunately and it was a um a slotless racing uh set and i guess that that they call that uh, total control racing i'm not really yeah. sure but it was a slotless yeah, set. tcr isn't it they yeah they, something they, like they, that unfortunately when we moved away, I, it was given to me, I think, for Christmas, maybe when mm. I was like six or seven. Okay. And when we moved from Connecticut to to here, to Pennsylvania, uh -huh. um, 
uh, things gradually started to break on right. it. And the local toy store didn't sell Tyco. They only sold AFX. Uh, yeah. So I couldn't, I couldn't buy any more track. I couldn't buy any more cars. I couldn't even buy tires or the little uh, contacts. Yeah. So things started to break. And finally I had to throw it away That's because cool. it just stopped working at some point. Yeah. And um, we didn't have enough money to buy another set. So I kind of didn't race slot cars anymore then, unfortunately. Right. But then I would go to my uncle's house in the summers and we would, we would race together. Cool. Um, so that was my first set. The, f- the first set had a, uh, an F body Camaro that was black yeah. that had, uh, it was, you know, it was like an early, like a 72, mm-hmm. 73 Camaro and it had, it was black and it had flames on the, on the hood, I think. Okay. And then I had a Peterbilt truck. Okay. Good combo. And, <laughs> yeah. And then I had some other, some other muscle car that I can't remember now, but I remember the truck and I remember the, the Camaro. Yeah. And, um, yeah, those were the cars. It's, um, you know, growing up in, in Ireland a, and, and speaking to people from over in North America, pretty much, you know, 95% of people where I'm started off with scale extra, you know, on that 132nd, yeah. whereas yeah. it's 95% of people or maybe even more over here, it's all HO to start off, you know? Yeah. So here, you know, scale electric really wasn't, uh, uh, part of the culture yeah. until, you know, decades after it was invented mm. because it was a, you know, a, a cottage, not cottage industry, but it was a home brand in, in England yeah. and it wouldn't have been exported and it would have been a, you know, there, there wouldn't have had as ready access to power adapters and things like that years wow. and years ago. So when, uh, the the European brands in general developed, they developed all for their own markets basically, yeah. and they flourished in those markets, but they didn't mm-hmm. get exported. Yeah. So we had our own brands here that flourished. Yeah. And then essentially died in the seventies because of commercial track racing and because of the prevalence of HO and mm-hmm. the and because of big box stores coming yeah. out and killing most of what we kind of call the hobby market. Yeah. Um, and that didn't happen in pretty much all of Europe. Yeah. Uh, they had, you know, you didn't necessarily have to have uh, a smaller track here or there because there were more uh, uh, clubs or not commercial raceways, but clubs that developed yeah. that really supported the hobbies. And, you know, it's, it's kind of odd that in a country where houses have always been large, you know, the slot cars that, that persevered through, Mm. you know, to get us into the modern era are all very small scale. Yeah. You know, HO was, you know, far and away the dominant type of slot car for decades. Yeah. um, In the U S certainly the seventies and eighties here in the U S and that's, it is peculiar that it just that even though the tracks were tiny and the houses were big, <laughs> that, that, yeah. it's like, it doesn't like what, what this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, I get you. It's, um, you know, it was again, I'm like you, you know, my uncles, they gifted us their scale extra set and mm-hmm. that's what initially started it. But we got a, an AFX, um, it was Tommy AFX at the time back in Europe. Uh, we got one of those sets, um, and I think I would have been about nine years old at the time. Um, mm-hmm. And funnily enough, I still we still haven't done it, but I got actually got a gift of that same set, all boxed and everything. We mm-hmm. still haven't had a chance to uh, to set it up, so we're looking forward to that. But it's it's oh, that's uh, great. That's yeah, awesome. Very cool. Um, it was the, absolutely. It was the one with the Testarossa and the Porsche 959, and it had this Ugh. the computer that allowed you to run a ghost car, you know, which was okay. We thought it was amazing, and of course, it had they had lights at the time, and 
they were faster Beautiful. than scale extric, you know. So we moved, we had kind of well, both and ended up sure. HO solid and then going back to scale extric, you know, you know how it works. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I mean you you kind of gravitate towards what you you know what you prefer yeah. anyway. I mean, most of what my uncle and I would race would be 125th scale models that he made into slot cars yeah. from scratch. And then cool. kind of, you know, kits that, from the 60s that he raced when he was a teenager in the 60s. Yeah. And so it was definitely a mishmash of, of uh, scales, but it was all custom built yeah. stuff that he made by hand. There was nothing obviously rtr then there was you didn't couldn't yeah. buy a slot car I, I i mean people happy to correct me i'm sure you couldn't really buy a slot car in the 60s out of the box and put it on the track like yeah. you can now so yeah yeah but anyway when did you first start your channel slot car news and what gave you the idea so i started uh the blog slotcarnews.blogspot.com Mm -hmm. in 2006 i started it after a uh, uh a falling out with an owner of a large message board okay and i wanted to do my own thing mm -hmm. uh i wanted to be creative with slot cars mm -hmm. in a way that felt different and that i was in a way that i could add to the hobby mm -hmm. um so I wanted to do reviews and I wanted to take photos because I was a photographer at the time yeah. near New York city. And we had a, um, I didn't, I was at a newspaper full time and we had a huge professional studio at, at the paper. It was like mm -hmm. in a 20 by 40 foot room nice. and there was tons and tons and tons of lights. And I had access to it all the time because we, you know, I was a staffer there and we didn't, yeah use it a lot for certain periods of time. So I would take the, the, I mean, I took this there, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And some other cars that I had been buying and just started taking like fun photos and posting them. Yeah. And that kind of led to reviews. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that the posts that I was doing on slot forums, not slot forum, but slot, yeah. slot website, slot message boards. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're getting a lot of views. Yeah. So I wanted to do something creative with slot cars yeah. that involved news because I was a news guy Yeah. and always kind of have been. So I wanted to share news. Um, and I realized that I was getting so much news from SCX and Scalextric and a bit from Carrera mm -hmm. and then from other places online. And I realized that that, uh, that was going to be interesting to people. Mm -hmm. So I started, I started the blog in 2000, May, I think of 2006. Um, cool. and I picked the name because it sounded like a newspaper Yeah, and yeah. because it sounded like an easy thing to remember. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about like slot car star, slot car, uh, uh, Gazette, Slot Car, whatever. Sure. And Slot Car News just kind of rolled off the tongue. Well, the logos, um, it's sort of, you know, indicative of that. And, you know, your logo with the, the newspaper. Oh, with the hawker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with yeah. The hawk. yeah. Yeah. So that that came about. There's a, uh, we have a graphic artist at the paper that I work at currently, and he designed that for me. Cool. I asked him for something that was kind of a, you know, traditional uh, newsboy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I started that in 2006, and then I started a, a channel sort of around that time when I was working mm -hmm. for SCX. Yeah. And I've lost the sign-in, and it's difficult to get the sign-ins from Google if you don't have the email anymore, and even if oh, you yeah. do. <laughs> I know so, exactly what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so I have another channel that's called Slot Car News, that has some old SCX videos on it. But then, and then I started a newer channel uh, years, years after that. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when I was working for Carrera. Yeah. And, but then I really got back into it during the pandemic early. I lost my job at scale uh, uh, two days before basically everything shut down. Yeah. And, um, I, I knew I wanted to do, even though it was extremely painful mm. to have lost my job with the company, yeah, sure. I knew sure. I wanted to do something still with slot cars. And I figured, well, I've worked for all the companies now. Yeah. I might as well out them about a lot of the nonsense that I had seen. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of tell people the inside stuff that yeah, frankly, not many people know because to the best of my knowledge, I'm the only one that's worked for more than one slot car company here yeah. in the U S certainly in North America. And mm -hmm. I've worked for three. Yeah. So, I mean, no one else can say that. Yeah. And I've seen a lot of nonsense mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, uh, and it's hard to let, it's hard for people to believe sometimes the stuff that I, that I tell them, about the yeah. insides of things, but I'm only like scratching the surface yeah. because I still, I don't want to burn every bridge in the world. So, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but anyway, gotcha. um, so it was about two, it was, um, you know, a few days into the pandemic when mm -hmm. I really started doing the channel, uh, or really kind of got serious about doing it again. And, yeah. you know, when I started it, there was, or I started doing it again, I kind of modeled a lot of what I was doing on what I had done previously. Mm -hmm. Um, but just me on camera and then kind of some of what Harry wise have been doing because yeah. Harry of home racing world, cause he's, you know, like the one consistent guy for mm. literally decades. That's been, uh, doing this kind of content with, you know, authenticity authority. Yeah. You know, he's not just a guy that, says he knows slot cars. Yeah. He knows slot cars. Yeah. And I wanted to not necessarily compete with him because mm -hmm. I love Harry yeah. and he's a, he's like the most valuable guy out there as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But I wanted to kind of do my own thing. Sure. And that's why I started doing news mainly exclusively. Oh. Um, and then rants here and there, but, the, those longer videos don't really get as many views and yeah, I don't know. It news is what I like to help people kind of keep on top of just because it's kind of what I like. In. You can jump into the, your video, say, you know, your, your news video and find what you're looking for if you need to, you know, and you know, there's maybe a couple of sections you're particularly looking for information on. It's quite easy to find that as well, which is good. So I think that I format that. works. That that format works. You know, it's it's. Um, I know we've we've certainly dived in there plenty of times and um, and you know picked up information about different things. And it's. I think that's. It's. It was a, a really good idea to do that because there wasn't anything like that. I mean, we're only new to it now. You know, YouTube and and various mm -hmm. things. But um, there's. I I find that there's not really many places where you can go and pick up succinct accurate information and i think that's one of the good things about your channel you know you can go in there you can find the information you're looking for you can dive in and out when you want which is good yeah, i appreciate that starters like people mm -hmm. were first starting a channel they want to know about a car exactly. they could just yep. go on your channel and yeah it's in their head yeah that's thank you thank you very much that's um probably the most important thing that you touched on there that you both touched on there was because um i want the uh, the i want the channel to have the broadest possible appeal mm -hmm. i mean obviously for views sake but um a lot of hobbyists are kind of tuned into what's going on mm -hmm. and the hobbyist group is fairly small yeah. There's like people that do it, um, that do the hobby in a more uh, general way. And it's a fun thing for the family to do or yeah. a fun thing that they're kind of getting into for them and their, their kid or them and their buddy next door or mm -hmm. them and their wife. And uh, that's a much larger group, like yeah. by a factor of 
probably a hundred. Mm. So, uh, I've always kind of tried to keep the discussion on the, on the most basic kind of level. Mm -hmm. Um, because I like, I don't need to tell a hobbyist how to tune a slotted car. No, I need to help, uh, a new, a new person understand what a slotted car is, what they yeah. might encounter if they buy one, mm-hmm. like, like, why is it different from a Skelector car? Or why is it? Yeah. Sorry. Why is it, you know, $30 more expensive mm. than a, than a Carrera car, analog car, yeah. you know, and, um, the most important thing I think you can do that, that, that I think I can do is just provide the information about what's coming. And, you know, I have fun with it, obviously. And yeah. I, I must, I must admit, I probably swear a little too much. I don't really try, try not to, <laughs> um, but I, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's important to, you know, know, uh, the, the, what you, know the value of what you're doing or what you yeah. know, the possible value of what you're doing. That's it. And that value I think is providing basic information about arrivals. Yeah. For Except, toy cars. <laughs> accept, accessible information as well. You know, I think that's yeah. the, that's the thing. Yeah. What have we got next? Sash? Slot car news has become one of the best places to go for all slot car related news. You must be very proud of this. What's next for your channel? Uh, more of the same is next for the channel. <laughs> I have, thank you, by the way. Um, I have tweaked, uh, the news a little bit. I've added kind of the editorial rant mm-hmm. at the end of the video, just because I realized that, um, a lot of people weren't watching the racing and show news. Um, yeah. they would just stop after the, the, the news news. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted to have the end of the video have value for people if they wanted to stick around Yeah, and watch something at the end of the video. And I can usually rant about literally anything slot car related Mm -hmm. anyway for two to five minutes. So why not add that into, uh, the news, I don't plan on really changing much. What I do on the channel is very limited because I still have a full-time job. Mm. um, And I still, uh, I consult for slot at Policar and I consult for LEB Mm -hmm. and I've turned down uh, consulting gigs for other companies that have offered, made offers to me Mm -hmm. because I don't have any extra time. And during the, uh, during the summer, I'm a team photographer for a baseball team locally. And nice. that actually is like the most fun, exciting thing I've done as far as work goes basically in my life. Awesome. Um, so uh, I'm kind of limited while I'm still working for the newspaper as a photographer and videographer, yeah. what I can do for the channel and how much I could change it. Sure. If at some point, Maybe I get to retire, which <laughs> that's going to be a long time from now. Um, and I can devote more time to the channel. I would probably mm-hmm. do more reviews. Yeah, I would cool. do a lot more live streams. I find that the live streams are more fun because I, inter- I like the interactions. Yeah. And I like the goofing around. And mm. it's just nicer just to do a live stream and kind of have it done than do yeah. a pre-recorded edited video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think people get more out of, uh, an interactive live stream than they do just a video because a live stream you can rewatch on demand, sure. but a video you can't ask questions in real time yeah. during. So, you know, if like I'm driving a car around, uh, I probably will do a live stream this weekend mm-hmm. and I'll probably do it on the Revo GT one Porsche. And nice. I haven't actually driven that car that I yeah. have. I've had it for a while, but I'm mm. going to drive one. And yeah. uh, the one that I, the one that I have had mm-hmm. and um, yeah, people will get my impressions. I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be great. <laughs> <Yeah>. Spoiler. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think I'll be changing much in the channel mm -hmm. uh, because the format is pretty, pretty standard. And it's what I do is slot car news. Yeah, don't case. fix don't fix it if it's not broken. You know, that's what I say. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah, cool. What is your favorite video you've done? Uh, yeah, tough one. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I mean, some of my early videos, uh, when I've talked about production numbers yeah. and when I've talked about licensing, uh, -huh. uh, those were kind of rant videos where I was still very depressed about having lost my job sure. and in a pretty bad place uh -huh. mentally about a lot of that. Yeah. But it was liberating to finally talk about things that I couldn't talk about for more than 12 years. Sure. Talk about some of the nonsense that I saw and the yeah. just completely ridiculous business practices. Mm -hmm. And this sounds like a weird thing to say about your favorite video, but they were, it felt so good to finally be able to talk about those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, another video that was a favorite of mine was I did a, it was a video that I did with my uncle mm -hmm. where we talked about um, the slot car that Dave Gorley made for me. Ah, uh, yes. Is shotgun as a legend. Yes, exactly. It's in my uh, it's in my room. It's not here, unfortunately. And so that was the one that was based on the Carrera 57 Chevy that I did. Nice. Uh, that that was the Fast Eddie's Speed Shop car. Mm -hmm. That that car was based on a slot car, a 125th scale model jalopy that I raced when I was four, four or five years old. Nice. So it's a, a three generations of livery. Very and cool. for, and then with my uncle, who again was like my dad, and yeah. we he was there and he got to talk about a little bit about me racing with him and then the mm -hmm. car and the the modern the Dave's shotgun Dave's car and the yeah. Carrera car and we had the original car with us as well. That's cool. So that was probably my favorite video. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, probably my favorite video. Yeah, that's nice, Dave's. Dave's great. I chat to Dave a lot, yeah. actually. Um, very talented as well in um, building those cars. You know, he does some amazing stuff. Yeah, and, and he makes great guy. chili. Makes great chili as well. Yeah, Chili's yeah. Well. I I think I need to go to California to have some of the chili because, as you can tell, I'm an eater, and I love <laughs> love chili. Me too. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. and Dave's a such a great guy and he makes straight shooter as well you know oh uh, boy i love that no nonsense yeah. with him you know yeah. where you stand yeah. uh and um yeah and a killer model maker absolutely just killer stuff we actually have a couple of bottles of his uh chili sauce there so <laughs> wow spoiler That's alert great. spoiler <laughs> alert it's good <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are your favorite slot car brands? So, um, I re well, I I really like uh, Slot It and Policar. Mm -hmm. I really like Scale Auto. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any other 124 scale stuff. Um, I really like. Uh, I mean, Revo slot, how can you not like them? Yeah, sure. BRM, mm. how can you not like them? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I like a lot of the, I can appreciate the brands for what they do. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I have favorite cars from every company. Mm. Uh, Ningo, you know, someone that's sort of around, but not really anymore. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I can't it's kind of wishy-washy I know to say, but, but I really, I mean, I have so many cars and I have <laughs> so many cars, cars that I there? love from different companies. So how many What's cars that? do you have? There's a good question. How many cars do you have? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, after I got, 
uh, after I left Carrera, mm. I had, I mean, about eight years worth of samples because yeah, okay. I would get, you know, it's, I, you work for the company, you do social media, you mm. get basically what you want. You know, it's part yeah. of the cost of doing business. So I had, I don't know, well over 2000 Carrera cars. I don't even know, honestly. Um, many of them were, were, uh, cars that I liberated from the trash at the mm -hmm. office. Yeah. Um, I still have hundreds of cars. I couldn't tell you. I have, uh, <laughs> over here, uh, off camera, I have my slot it. I have the cars that I, that I have for, um, like the consulting stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the slot it and Policar samples I get from LEB. Yeah. I used to get them directly from Skelectric USA when I worked there, when mm -hmm. they were the distributor. Yeah. So I don't know. I probably have, I probably have more than a hundred yeah. slotted cars. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few dozen NSR cars. I have mm -hmm. still probably more than a hundred SCX cars. I have definitely more than a hundred Carrera cars, um, uh, around a hundred Skelectric cars. Yeah. Uh, I, I really don't know. It's yeah. not something that, you know, I mean, I, I was curious. I knew, knew that would be hard to answer. <laughs> yeah. I have piles of cars on my desk here. I mean, it's a, it's mm. a disgusting, embarrassing mess, quite frankly, which is why <laughs> I have this fixed camera that only ever sees one angle of my <laughs> desk. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I love every company has something good about it. Yeah. And I, I mean, this, this mini was one of the least enjoyable slot cars I've ever driven before <laughs> I took the magnet out because yeah. the magnet was too heavy mm. and it had a, a mag, a, a, a NC2 in it, which yeah. had a little bit of downforce. So the car would go, just come to a dead stop when you would drive it sure. and it was loud. You know, the gear mesh was noisy. Yeah. And it was no fun. I took the magnet out mm. and I put a bunch yeah. of weight in it mm -hmm. and it was an extremely enjoyable car to drive. Different beast. And it was just, it was just like a whole different experience. Yeah. And it went from miserable, disappointing to so enjoyable. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, and that's why I like slot cars because you can really, you know, you can race things as they come, mm -hmm. which most people do, or yeah. you can modify and tinker and tweak and ruin in some cases <laughs> slot cars and, uh, yeah. and have a lot of fun with them and yeah. you make it your own mm. and you can grow with it and you can learn with it. And that's, that's what I find really exciting about it yeah. is that there's, you know, you can just do what you want and there are no rules no. when you're just at home goofing around. So that's it. Yeah. Exactly. It's a bit like you, Sasha, isn't it? Um, you know, starting off, she got a, a Carrera a set for her birthday. Um, and, you know, now she's hammering magless cars around our track. <laughs> a That's great. Bit, a little bit too fast. But um, so. Um, and Okay, you know, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just by time. Yeah. I, di I just didn't want to move much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, but you're, she loves the, you know, she helps set up the cars and she's interested mm -hmm. in that. And I mean, she really, you know, it's it's so much fun driving these um, magless cars, especially I find the, the metal chassis cars, you know, I really mm -hmm. enjoy the dynamics of those. And, you know, in the 132nd and 124 is probably my favorite, I would say. Um, yeah. I like the detail as well, you know, the, the extra detail you get. And I just find that the the mass of the cars, it just kind of makes for some very interesting racing, you know? Absolutely. Sasha, yeah. do you like the 124 scale stuff yeah. better or do you like it as much or? I like both, but I like 124 because I started off with it and BRM yeah. and Carrera has it. Yeah, I just like 124. Yeah, they're both cool. It's good, fun to have both, isn't it? You know, a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah I I agree. I really, in a lot of ways, I kind of prefer 124th scale mm. cars. Um, 
certainly the BRM cars are yeah. just probably the most enjoyable for me. Yeah. Um, the championship that I have, I have two championships and they're both team championships where I raced with somebody cool. and, um, and I haven't won many races, but I've won one endurance race that I did at my club years yeah. ago. And that was with the same BRM Porsche. And, yeah. um, I love them because they're not really all that fast, mm -hmm. but you really have to drive them and you can really oh, yeah. enjoy seeing the car on the track yes and seeing really how the car is performing yeah and for me and i'm wondering if for you guys too like that's the thing that i like about heavier slower cars like yeah revo slot like um uh brm mm -hmm. is really seeing the beauty of the car on the track and the yes. little kind of little things that a car does going around the track yeah, I mean the you know the the group two are particularly fun. We've we've got a load of we've got a lot of, of BRM cars and uh, mm -hmm. Revos and the the group two are kind of my yes I love the the GT cars as well. Don't get me wrong, and we have mm -hmm. those Porsche GT ones, uh, McLarens, amazing. But the group twos are so much fun because, as you said, you can you can race them. And you can watch, you can see that back end step out and actually correct it, you know, whereas when you may be in the smaller scales, even 132nd, you know, you've got, you probably don't get the opportunity to, to have that input as much because it's not yeah. as easy. It's not as easy to, uh, to visually see it, you know? Yeah. Sasha, when you look at a car on the track, are you, or when you're racing, do you, is it for, for you, is it about the speed of the car or is it about kind of the enjoyment of racing the car, about seeing it move around the track? I think it's enjoying seeing it move around. Yeah. Yeah. For me, yeah. when I kind of was coming at this new, when I got back into the hobby, which was around 2000, 2001, 2002, mm. um, I thought about doing trains. Yeah. But because I really love scenery and uh, yeah. <clears throat> I kind of really enjoy seeing a toy, yep. a moving toy going through a scene. And I talk about this in my videos a fair amount is the world of make believe. Yeah. And the little buildings, the little scenic, whatever is the trees, the people yep. that you can get. And the car moves around through that little neighborhood that you make. Yes. Uh, or the train does or whatever. And for me, it's kind of fun to think, oh, look, there goes the car past the grandstand again or yeah. past the, the hot dog stand or whatever it is. And, you know, to really think about the toy in its environment. Yeah. yeah. And that's why okay. I don't like super fast cars because you don't really get that. It's all about, is the car going to fly off the track? You know, it's not. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's it's uh it's similar for me i mean you know obviously it, everything's always a work in progress but we put a lot of <laughs> lot of effort yes. in, a lot of effort into our our uh slot car table and our scenery you know and mm -hmm. everything was you know is, the scenic aspect is as important as the rest of it for us and i really we really enjoy the cars seeing them going around that track you know and uh um, yeah you know the effort you put into it and you know simple things like we have a i like to call it the 80s the 80s corner because we have like the delorean parked in in front of the <laughs> billboard you know behind cool. the, you have the general lee and kit and stuff mm -hmm. in there and the, the bandits the yeah we've got the, the bandit trans am and stuff and nice you know little things like the bridge and you know all this stuff is 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 uh, handmade, you know, and we've mm -hmm. done that, and it's enjoyable looking at it, you know. And when it comes to, you know, you sort of look at it and think, you know, that looks really nice, and it looks even better than with the cars. Um, yeah, the one thirty second, they're easy scale with the the model, you know. I would say that's probably yeah. where they would maybe be a little bit better for the diorama aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Um uh the scenery stuff i found especially when i was working for carrera 
Yeah. <clears throat> that when a family would buy a set, if they were just putting it up periodically, like mm. once a year for Christmas or whatever holiday, uh, then they wouldn't really stick with it a lot of the time. Mm. But if it made the, if they made a slot car track part of the, the family as yeah. it, you know, like a lifestyle with you, you build a table for it, you put it on the table, it's a permanent thing. You yeah. put scenery with it. Once it got to the level of build a table, mm. you had them, yes. you know, you had them as a slot car person and yeah. the family even better. If you had a family, not just one guy. Yeah. Um, and if you had it like you, you know, a dad and, yeah. and a child or dad and children or, or grandparents mm. and children, then you would have them if you could get it as part of the family life. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why I think digital is so successful, mm. especially here in the U S yeah. is because it's not just limited by the number of lanes. It's limited by the number of people you can have on the track with you, yeah. you know, and that usually is two to three to four people. Maybe yeah. you rarely get beyond six Yeah, and where it's an issue. So yeah. I really think that, you know, we really put a huge effort into marketing two families when I was at Carrera and the events that I did were basically all the messaging I, when I would talk to people and it was very retail kind of messaging and mm. retail selling was, you know, I would be at an event for days and we would be talking to families and I, that's how I would sell it. It's yeah. a family toy. Yeah. It's not, and it's something you put it up permanently on a table or, mm -hmm impermanently on a pool table maybe yeah but once you put it up and it becomes a part of your family then it's a you get a lot more value out of that investment then agreed and you 100%. really enjoy it as a family yeah. and that's the best expression i feel of yeah. of doing that and then kids playing with their parents i yeah. think is just it's 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 a i get very emotional and <laughs> it's like it's like a religious thing yeah you know that you share this with your child mm -hmm. and you cannot take those memories away no yeah and agree 100 percent. yeah it's 100 percent. It, it it so matters anyway it made such a difference you know when i um sasha helped me do it but when we built the installation you know and mm -hmm. it's it took it from um you know uh, fly by night well let's say right uh yeah. to a permanent fixture you know and a, a part of your week you know that's yep we look forward to to doing and you know a lot we do our reviews and unboxing you know and sasha loves doing that and it's good fun to be honest it's good it's great for, i i enjoy watching her test the cars on the track you know i know i'm filming it but that's the part i enjoy and then we combine it with like these podcasts as well, you know, get to know people and other people in the hobby. And it's, it's a kind of a good balance for us that it's having fun and recording it really is what we're doing uh, with the reviews. And, and then yeah. this aspect as well, which is, you know, I guess getting Sasha into involved in the hobby, but then also taken to the next stage of where, she's doing these podcasts and questions she shares these in her in her class on a monday oh, as well. yeah so these podcasts are they do a, a show and tell or a share and yeah. sasha does presentations on excel and everything of the things wow. she's doing in the hobby so that's awesome yeah. and uh, and starting early with the idea of uh learning broadcasting yeah. learning uh, a skill, you know, learning how to do video, uh, exactly. learning, editing, learning, yeah. asking questions. There's a lot of learning going on there. So yeah. that's a, that's a great thing as well as the social aspect of it is, Definitely. is in, in is priceless. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it is. Yeah. What, what are next, your Seth? favorite slot cars and can you show us some? So. You saw your mini. Yeah, my mini. Um, so probably because uh, these are on my desk. Um, 
the Skelectric uh, Formula Ones, the Shark Nose, and the Cooper that they made years ago. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, very nice. I really, really love these. Uh, the detail on them is exquisite. Mm -hmm. and they're too fast because the motors are uh, are way too powerful and the, <laughs> and the okay. cars are teeny tiny. Yeah. Um, uh, these are definitely two of my favorites. I do Very not nice. drive them much, mm. um, but I, I have them sitting on my desk and I enjoy looking at them all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, I have... I have uh, a lot of cars that are out on my track Yeah, that are favorites of mine, like the, the car shotgun Dave made for me. Yeah. Um, like the Ninco Porsche three, five, six mm -hmm. that I kind of refinished when I was, uh, uh, uh away one, a couple weeks at a, or a, a week at the uh, jets or a, no, it was a giants training camp, right. uh, cool. in upstate New York. <laughs> and, um, yeah. I mean, uh, I have a, a couple different cars, but the three fifty six from Ninco that I redid, uh, the shotgun Dave car is definitely one of my sure. favorites. Uh, the Carrera cheetah, um, that I got made. Nice. Um, and the Cudas, which are all pointing to all of them, but they're all up here. That's cool. We have one Cuda actually. We've got a silver Cuda in there. Great. That's Hands awesome. on hat. Have to admit, haven't. <laughs> Do you know that you get to that point, David? Obviously, you know it well, but we're, you know, reviewing cars and then you're looking. And today I was looking and I was like, God, we haven't even taken that out of the box yet. Yeah. And that's that's one of them. And so that needs to happen. <laughs> yeah. I have a number of cars that I've gotten fairly recently that because of the, I have an autoimmune condition that makes me super tired. Yeah. Okay. Um, like debilitating fatigue. Right. So right, I yeah. haven't really been able to do much right. extra when I come home from work. And even to the point of where I just like taking photos of cars is it just, it's hard yeah. just to get the energy going. Yeah. So I have so many cars that I need to get to. I mean, I, yeah. I got one of the scale auto, um, 132nd scale the c7 uh, is it yeah the c7 mm. and it is just it is such a blast it's one of the the home series cars mm. they scale auto actually sent this to me directly from spain nice. and um it's such a gorgeous car it's sitting been sitting here on my desk for a while now and i just yeah i talked about it during my live stream i drove it during my live stream mm. and you know i don't i just i haven't done enough with it mm just because I just don't have the time and it just, I have so many of these cars that I really <laughs> want to get to. And then yeah. old cars that I want to get back to like, I mean, talk about the, you know, talk about the mini again. Why not? It deserves you know, to come it, back. That deserves to come back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's just, there's so many, there's just so much to do and so little time to do it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. How did you get into photographing? And what is your favorite camera system? Okay, so um, this is the question that every you have to ask every photographer. <laughs> yeah, so I um, was going to school for or going to college for art mm -hmm. um, at a local, actually near where I live now, um, at a community college, uh, Williamsport Area Community College. I went there straight out of high school and I wanted to take advertising art because at that time I thought I wanted to be uh, a graphic designer doing album covers sure. for, for vinyl albums. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. So I got into the art program mm -hmm. and I took photography and I was miserable at it. Um, I didn't really like the professor. Okay. Um, but I met my wife at that school. She was Good. became my fiance and then my wife. Yeah. Um, so we um we transferred to another we graduated from that school. I took one photography course at that school and barely passed. I think yeah. he just passed me to get me out of the class. 
<laughs> and um, I went to, we transferred together to another local school, a university. Mm. And I took, she was taking photography as more of an emphasis. And it was fine art. That was the emphasis at yeah. that school. At the previous school, it was advertising art. And we graduated from there with mm. two year degrees in advertising art. So we went to the new school and we both did a fine art major with a minor in photography. And, nice. and that was because of her uh, yeah. that I took the class. And mm. I really enjoyed the class. I really enjoyed the, the uh, 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 professor we had. Mm -hmm. and uh because she was kind of a hard ass to me and i really yeah. I, like i enjoyed the way she taught yeah. and um we went to a, a march in in uh, dc one weekend as yeah. a class outing and i got a really cool certainly at that time picture of uh, bill clinton during this during this rally in washington dc yeah. um and you know in this mass of humanity i got mm -hmm this future president and a pretty decent yeah. photo of him. Yeah. And I was hooked at that. Like, Oh wow. This is like photojournalism. Yeah. And I kind of backed into it that way. And then, so we graduated from there and I really didn't have a, a way, uh, a direction out of college. Yeah. Uh, I started out, I was working at a camera store that was kind of across the street from me. Mm -hmm. at the time and so i kind of learned about cameras a lot there yeah um because we dealt a lot in used gear so i learned about how not only to sell there but to i learned i understood cameras better in a very practical sense there because yeah. it was mm -hmm. almost all used gear very yeah. worn and you know real hardcore photographers would come in there local mm -hmm. photographers of all different types. And so you really yeah. got to really learn from people who actually use the gear full time, yeah. like what they were doing with it and how they were using it. And I was, uh, I could get a full time job as a press operator at a newspaper. Yeah. And that's what I did. And I really hated that. And then right. I got <clears throat> let go and I got rehired as the circulation director of a newspaper. Okay. So like delivering papers. Yeah. And then in the, in the evenings of those jobs, they let me get credentials to, uh, pro sports and, uh, Penn state foot, Penn state football mainly. <clears throat> so I would drive the three hours yeah. down to Philadelphia in the evenings to take pictures at, um, Philadelphia 76ers games and Eagles games. Yeah. And I went out to some Jets and Giants in the Meadowlands because I worked for a newspaper and we didn't have the wire services. Mm. So they would use my pictures the 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 next day um, from the football game. So the first football, baseball, hockey I ever shot were, was pro sports. Yeah. And I had no idea what I was doing and I'd barely <laughs> come back with a picture or two. Yeah. So but I learned to do that and I did that for a few years and built up enough of a portfolio to get my first job at a tiny daily newspaper, actually also nearby where I live yeah. now. And I worked there for two years and then moved on for about 15 years at different newspapers oh. in the suburbs of New York city, Binghamton up, you know, upstate New York, yeah. the suburbs of New York city. I was a photographer at the San Francisco examiner. We helped restart the paper when it was sold to a private family from Hearst corporation. Yeah. Okay. So I actually got to restart or start a newspaper. That's interesting. And then I got, I got let go from that job because they had mm -hmm. to, the paper was starting to fail. So I worked yeah. for wire services in, in San Francisco, mm -hmm. AP, adjuncts, France press, Getty mm -hmm. Reuters. And I had a, a UPI. I had a good deal of success with that. Nice. And got offered a job back at the paper. We left in the suburbs in New York city. Mm -hmm. And we, we took that job. We left San Francisco and moved back to New York and, um, stayed there for eight years until I got the job with SCX. Cool. So that's the long version of it. <laughs> yeah. And no, that's, it's, it's always interesting oh, hearing people. And then down. camera system. Um, yeah. I basically had them all. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I own uh, Canon gear still mm -hmm. and Fuji gear still Fuji mirrorless. I went from Canon to Fuji mirrorless. Fantastic and, tone out of the Fuji. Yeah. Beautiful. The yeah. colors are exquisite. Yeah. Um, the autofocus is horrendous yeah, and the, <laughs> the, the, the operating systems of the camera and the, the ergonomics are just a tragic tragedy with the Fujis. <laughs> they, are, um, they look good when you're looking at physically at them, they look nice. <laughs> yeah. But then the buttons just start doing things on their own and the camera mm. just changes all of its settings, regardless of how you had it set for some reason. Yeah. And the autofocus is just, terrible and not okay. not reliable yeah. so then i switched to sony uh, about two years ago and i don't love i don't love the colors really at all no. but the autofocus is Very the good. best i've ever used and i rely on it 100 percent. the dynamic range on the sony's is very good as well it is and sony yeah. actually makes chips for almost everybody so yeah. it's kind of you know, you're kind of using a Sony camera, regardless if it's a Fuji or a Canon. Uh, yeah. Nikon, I think, makes their own uh, chips, maybe. But yeah. anyway, and I had Leica gear for a long time, and I've used mm. Nikon gear. Um, so I've used most of the systems. Uh, I would love the colors of Fuji in the Sony yeah. with all of the other Sony characteristics. Yeah, agreed. I um, So I was telling you before about building digital twins and was using actually intel uh uavs and mm -hmm. the first oh, yeah. generation of sony a7rs okay. from then on to actually uh to do that photogrammetry work mm -hmm. and um, there was nothing else that was able to compete with it um you know at that time they just yeah. especially when you're trying to when you need that dynamic range and you're trying to take, again, the autofocus has to be superb, uh, good dynamic range because, you know, not everything is nicely lit. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. the menu system was always a bit of a pain. That was the. Yeah, but you get used to yeah. the menus yeah. on a camera are things that you always get used to. I've always found Canon system very easy to use, but lacking in any real. Yeah quality or depth quite frankly um <laughs> but i loved the ergonomics of canon's system and yeah. i would have stayed with it had canon still supported fixing the longer glass that i have like i have a a 300 to 8 that's nice. you know a really great lens still mm -hmm. but now the they won't replace the lens mount anymore and i even sent it yeah. to a, a specialty repair shop in new jersey and the guy can't even mm -hmm fix it. So I have this and it's a, you know, a 30 year old lens literally, but the autofocus is still good enough yeah. and the, it's still tack sharp. And it's, I mean, it's mm. gruesome to look at. It's yeah. a very worn out lens, but yeah. I, I can't fix it. And mm. it's disgusting yeah. to me, it, you know, to replace yeah. it would be more than I can Crazy. afford. So, well, the yeah. big, big money as well for, for, uh, that sort of range, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you name two car liveries that you'd like to see made as slot cars? Um, two cars and liveries, is it? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm excited to see uh, more Japanese cars get done. Mm. Uh, I grew up in the 70s and 80s when... Um, a lot of Japanese cars weren't thought of as cars that people really wanted to really had like desire desirable thoughts about yeah they were more considered like just kind of utilitarian mm. and then like the 240 came out and oh. then when i was a, a teenager like the mitsubishi starian dodge conquest mm. and um yeah so there was there's a lot of cars that are kind of coming out now that I'm excited to see come out. Yeah. Uh, the BRN 240s are probably my most, I, I guess, my most anticipated car this year. And it, even with the Datsun 510s, which we love, but these yeah. 240s, I can't wait. 
to get. I am uh, guardedly optimistic about the shape of those cars. I've been hmm. really looking at the shapes, uh, and I have only seen photos of the hmm. prototypes, and um, I am waiting to hold my final judgment, let's say, until I see uh, until I see better, more accurate photos of yeah. comparative photos because I the the 240 to me is a very long and lean car mm. from the front windshield to the to the front edge yeah. of the nose the whole clip of yeah. the car has a very kind of long lean look to it mm. and then the back end from the a pillar to the back end of the car has that very stocky kind of yeah. muscular look to it yeah. And it's a very delicate combination of shapes. Yes. And I'm, uh, it's just a car that, you know, that I've always loved and I'm hopeful that they've done it well. Yeah. I'm also hopeful that someone does it in 132. Uh, Fingers crossed. Probably more so than the 510 for me. Yes. Um, the 510 I've always thought is a cool car. Mm. Uh, I got nothing against it, but again, like, um, and I don't know where it is. The, uh, the more, uh, uh, Nissan, the first generation Nissan Skyline, the Hakoska car. Yeah. The, the, the original one that's kind of like their version of the Ford Mustang. You've got that a, car, you've got a t-shirt. Like I'm pretty sure you have a t-shirt with that car on it. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. And somewhere I have the, the model. Um, yeah, I'm looking for it and I can't find it. Yeah. And it's a car that I came to see kind of later in life. You know, when I started yeah. looking at the, at the initial D, uh, live action movie, as well as the yeah. anime series, I'd like to see that car done and widely released. Yeah. The, uh, the initial D, uh, Trino, uh, the, the, the AE 86. That'd be fun. Uh, yeah, it would. I mean, I know Carrera did it, but because of the, yeah. way they did in such a limited release and mm. the way the mold was made, I believe it's exclusive to only one market yeah, and right. the licensing, I don't know, can be gotten and translated over here. I've asked Carrera directly about this and what I can say publicly is that I wasn't given an answer that I can talk about publicly okay. <laughs> that's satisfying to anybody really, yeah. even to myself. They basically said they can't do it. It's the, that's yeah. the real answer. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate because I think it's, it's a car that could sell a lot in certain areas and definitely, definitely. be a fairly widely appealing car. Maybe yeah. not here in the U S mm. but in Asia, for sure. People yeah. know that series. Definitely. And I think if it were more widely available around the world, it would be a car that people would, come back to quite frankly because there yeah. is a massive social media uh area around the ae86 there is, and jdm yeah. japanese domestic market cars in general it used to be a very popular car in ireland um we used okay. to have a lot of japanese imports people would bring in performance cars and sure there was a group of us that i mean i was always uh I've had all of those cars over the years. You know, I wish I still had some of them. And, so uh, jealous. That's amazing. They were, honestly, I, I knew probably six or seven people that had those. And at the time, I had the Celica GT4s, uh, yeah. MR2 Turbos, and nice. um, Supras. I wish I still had those because they're all gone up crazy. Skylines, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. But those Toyota GTs, you know, the older Toyota GTs, that'll be a great car to bring out as well. Um, yeah. I, I mean, there's a lot of the Japanese cars in general. I think, uh, I think we're just coming into a time frame now in the slot car market where guys my age, I don't know how old you are, but I'm 46 I'm, now. Okay. So I'm 53. So okay. when I was, I'm going to be 54 in a couple of weeks. When I was a kid, you know, like I said, it was, you know, the 240. Oh, my God, what is that? Yeah. You know, it, you thought it was like this weird, like a Ferrari or mm. something so exotic. Oh, it's a Japanese car. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Mm. 
Mm. And then, you know, like when I was a, a gearhead kid mm -hmm. in college, I had a, a Camaro, a 76 Camaro. And then I had a 79 Trans Am. Yeah. And, um, and I remember the first night and I would be downtown with my friends who all had muscle cars too. One of yeah. them had an SS 454 uh, Chevelle. Another one had a Camaro. Another one had a Z28, all F bodies, all awesome. mid 70s cars. Yeah. Uh, another one had a Buick uh, GS, mm -hmm. a Skylark, not yeah. a GSX. We used to tease them about that. <laughs> and, and one night, a uh, uh, Dodge Conquest came to town. Mm. It was the bright red of my shirt. Mm -hmm. And. It was so square and boxy mm. and it had that, that turbo pop mm. and the, the guy drove through downtown and there was a whole group of us sitting there with all our cars and, you know, we knew who had the cool cars and, mm. and we would just sit in the parking lot being, you know, like real whatever. <laughs> and yeah. we would cruise around downtown in this town and um, <clears throat> this guy came into town and he like pulled up real slowly and did a long burnout right mm. in front of the parking lot where we all were. <laughs> and everyone was like, what is that little car? And we, like, we knew it was a Japanese car. That was it, but it was a Dodge, but yeah. you know, it was a jet. And then you could hear the, the turbo pop. Mm. And I thought, Oh, Whoa, what is that? You knew it was some small displacement, crazy fast little car. Yeah. And he proceeded to beat the pants off of everybody that night in street racing. Light to light is what we used to it's the stupidest yeah. thing in the world to do. Yeah. And I don't encourage anybody to do it, but, but we did. Yeah. Um, and, and literally everybody tried this guy drag racing him that night and literally everyone got their butt handed to him. <laughs> Even with big displacement V8s, yeah. Yeah. the car just screamed. And that night was like formative for me with, yeah. with loving, you know, s performance, Japanese inspired Japanese cars. And I just kind of knew that there was something cooler about that kind of min maxing performance, you know, a small displacement, big horsepower engine. That was a quality kind of a thing. Yes. And rather than huge wasted displacement on a, you know, I had a, 6.6 .6 liter trans am 403 yeah well 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 you, you, if you have the gold one from carrera then you have mine because that <laughs> yeah. was that was the one cool. that that I was the it. one that i made when i worked at carrera and it ah. had my license plate on it when from when my wife and i were dating <laughs> we need to we need we were actually i wanted to get that those but they're not as easy come by now you know the prices yeah. are crazy as well so it's um yeah, yeah I, I put the license plate on there from, and nice. I still have the plate here somewhere. That That's was cool. the license plate that I put on there, TMD 434. That awesome. was my license plate in college. And I had a 79, not a 77, yeah. which is what that car is. Yeah. Um, and then the black. Oh, yeah. And then the black Trans Am that you may have that mm -hmm. you called the Smokey and the Bandit one. Yeah. If that's the blue shirt one that was released, for, uh, in like um, 2018, mm -hmm. that was the last project that I did for the company. Ah, cool. And it says Eastbound, E-S-T-B-N-D yeah. on the license plate. That's cool. That was the project that I did for Carrera last. Nice. nice. Great. They're great, uh, great model car, you know, to, to have. I want the real one, too. That's the thing. It's, sure. They're, go they're going up in price. That's the, the challenge. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, you can you can still find them, but they're definitely mm. for a really good condition one. I mean, you're looking at a minimum of thirty, forty thousand dollars now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Locally, there's actually quite a f there have been quite a few for sale around twenty ish thousand uh, dollars. I've seen yeah, from time to time. There's a lot of people that have them here locally. Uh, My wife a lot of black macho. Trans Ams here. You know the uh, Macho Trans Am they did. It was like a a third party tuned version. I'd never yeah. seen one until yeah. we went to Barrett Jackson and they had one there. And uh, my wife was very taken with it. Um, yeah. And it sold for, it didn't say, it only, I think it only made 34 grand, but it was well worth really? it. It was just, it was just a, 
a funny auction. There wasn't, they, some of the cars didn't make what they thought they'd make. And that was, mm -hmm. I, I looked at it and I was like, wow, that would have been a bargain, you know? Oh yeah. Because that was a very rare car yeah. at the time. I remember reading about it in car and driver, I think, mm. and thinking about like, wow, that's a pretty ballsy Trans Am that they made there. Yeah. And, um, that's a extremely rare car. Wow. Yes. That's cheap for that. There's actually a question you asked, Dave, about the, the real car question now. Well, if you could pick two real cars, one fantasy, and one you could buy in the future, what would they be? Good question. Uh, uh, buy in the future would be probably an Alfa Romeo Giulia. Love them. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never had an Alfa, so I don't know really the wisdom of buying an Alfa, especially where <laughs> I live. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one thing for a fact, <laughs> just be prepared not to, not to have it a lot of the time. That's all. <laughs> yeah. That's probably why I wouldn't actually buy one. Um, mm. uh, because I don't, I live in a pretty rural area yeah. and there's no place locally that sells them. So mm. I would love to own one, mm. but I, I, I don't ever think I would own one. A fantasy car probably now, um, would either be a 240 mm -hmm. or the uh, the Gen One uh, uh, Skyline, um, cool. or maybe even like the Fiat, uh, the the original Fiat Abarth, um, yeah. like kind of the one that SCX made with the little the little the the rear boot the boot uh, lid yeah. as the the little wing on the back. Yeah, um, those something exotic and extremely impractical like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's always the fun stuff isn't it the impractical stuff. yeah yeah well i mean yeah i mean probably what i'll end up owning in the future if i get rid of or when i get rid of my fiat 500 is uh if i'm lucky i'll be able to get a a fairly new uh honda uh civic sport i really like the way they yeah. look yeah um some kind of honda something it's been a long time since i, I owned two acuras yeah. um and uh, acura integras both of them mm. and it was the first japanese car i'd ever owned and i was blown away by how much different and better they were yeah um uh compared to all the crap cars i had owned at that point <laughs> <laughs> the nsx so, was one of my favorites um yeah what a car that was i knew a guy with an nsx actually and they're now obviously crazy expensive but that was an amazing car yeah i owned a i think it was a 91 or an 89 an 89 integra ls it yeah. was the one the smoother bodied one mm -hmm. and it really looked to me like a, a mini version of the nsx yes it had a very kind of cab forward mm -hmm. design and kind of a higher back end. And it was yeah. so easy to see out of. It drove like a dream. It handled like a dream. It yeah. got ridiculous mileage. Mm. It felt like such a high quality car for not a whole lot of money. Yeah. And it just like, it ticked literally every box. And it just felt completely different than any other car I had owned until that yeah. point. Um, oh. Yeah. So anyway. I think Sasha has one more question here for you. All right. What are you most excited about or in 2024 about the hobby? So probably all the Japanese cars that are coming out, cars mm. that I never would have expected to be extremely popular. Yeah. That are now some of the most desirable, most sought after. I mean, the 510 Datsun. Whoever would have thought such a boxy little no. car would captivate literally everyone's attention. And that's been amazing, really. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, like bit. I've been a lot of what I have done in the past is for the companies has been kind of look at trends mm. and really have an answer when somebody says, Okay, well, what's what's hot now and going forward, what do you think will be hot? And where, you know, like good, safe investments, that sort of thing. Yeah. And the trend is definitely more toward uh, there being a market for Japanese cars. Mm. 
yes. which hadn't ever been done to death. Mm. They and now we're really getting into the beginning of a wave, I think, of really kind of exotic, new, strange Japanese Japanese stuff that I think is really exciting. Yeah. Uh, also, um, uh, the the smaller companies. I've done a lot of talking about this. I did this in my State of the Union that I do. Um, it, I really think that the the niche companies like Racetrack Scenic specifically, mm-hmm. and companies on uh, on Shapeways doing three D yeah. printed doing three D printed things, mm-hmm. Area seventy one, Oliver, yeah, uh, doing niche products mm-hmm. for very 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 specific uses. Yeah you know, for anything you could ever want. Yeah. Um, I think is, is such a wonderful place to be in, in the hobby. It is, that yeah. Just, we've never had this kind of thing before mm-hmm. quality. The price really stuff is not really that expensive. Yeah. The quality of the, of the gears we have mm-hmm. is better than it's ever been quite literally. Yeah. The availability is just, it's everywhere you go online. 10 minutes from now, I can order something two days from now. It'll be here. Yeah. You know, when has that ever happened? It hasn't. No. And then, you know, the racetrack scenics kinds of people of the world making wonderful, simple wood, wood, wonderful. Like I love working with wood. Yes. And you can, you can sand it. It's not going to kill you like plastic is. You, you can, you don't have to worry about, you know, you can glue it together with Elmer's. It's not, a horrible smell <laughs> you know it's, it's like a great it's little a project movie. you know between uh you know magnetic race and and uh racetrack scenics and mm-hmm. it's just it's it's great stuff you know and it's so personable yeah. like you can really personalize exactly. it. even the bits that are left over you can make great things out of can't you say? totally yeah totally and being able to do that and like you know that's a thing that literally any kid understands yeah. You know, you make a little building, you can paint it yourself. Mm-hmm. You can use, I, I bought cheap paint at target, you know, yeah. like a $2 for a little thing of acrylic paint. Mm. And you just sit there with a crappy little brush and any kid can, do, if I can do it, any kid can do it. Yeah. And you glue it together with Elmer's. It's mm. wonderful. Great. It's just, it's, or you can make it really stylized, really detailed. <clears throat> But you don't have to, and it's yeah. reasonably priced. Yes, it's yeah. fun to build, mm. and personalizing it is is fantastic. Yeah. And once you start doing that, that's what you put it around your track. Mm-hmm. That's part of your life. Then, yes. you know, you do it with your dad, your mom, your yeah. brother, your sister. You sit there with a paintbrush and you have fun. Yeah, and and boom, you, you made a little made a little world of make believe. It's yes. how can you not love this? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So those are the things that I'm most excited for. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, new car releases kind of come and go, mm. but the idea of, of like the hobby really developing with the niche products that we have. Yeah. And we're just scratching the surface with, uh, with 3d printing Definitely. and then with the smaller companies making you know these very very specific products for just yeah. for us yeah exactly um, those are the kinds of things i'm probably most excited for awesome you know i i've uh, these things always happen very quickly but i just just looked at the clock and we're at one hour 23 minutes and it didn't seem like that long <laughs> well i i appreciate the time no, we appreciate we really appreciate it it's uh, you know as easy to keep on talking and yeah. keep going, you know, um, but um, we'll have to draw to a close there, I'm afraid. But, uh, th- sure. you know, we know you're busy and everybody's busy. So we definitely really appreciate you um, taking the time to come on our little podcast with us. It's uh, It's been really great. Well, I love, Sasha, that you do this with your dad. And I think it's very cool that you not only love slot cars but you love uh kind of this broadcasting aspect to it i think it's pretty neat and yeah. um 
yeah, I mean, the, the more you keep doing it, the, the better you'll get at it. And the it's, you're making some great memories here. So, yeah, um, great. keep going. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. As always, folks. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Bye.